and what was good has become even better. Yes, the TrimUI Smart Pro device was very successful due to its great value for money, and now it has found an operating system that can improve its performance even more. You can play PSP, Dreamcast, Nintendo 64, PlayStation, and even some ports. In fact, in the case of ports, there's a special section in the system just for this. And there are lots of top games. Look, this really is the new darling of the crowd, are you curious? Then come with me. Just to remind you, this is a device that has the following technical specifications. Although it's not a new device, as it's a year old, in that first version the device's factory system wasn't as optimized. So it's been possible to install the Crossmix system for a few months now, and it manages to get the best out of the device here. So that's what we'll see today. This device here is even known as China's PS Vita, because of the similarity, right, with the PS Vita. We have two analog sticks here, but they're not clickable, okay? But that doesn't interfere with the gameplay at all. We also have a D-pad here, which I honestly think is very good. Menu button, select, start, and four standard Super Nintendo buttons. And before anyone complains about the analog sticks not being clickable, I understand that some people use this click to configure a specific button. I do this in some games too, but it's not possible here. However, if you take into account the consoles that run here on this device, there are no games like this. Or else, only if there is a port that can use a clickable button. But the PSP doesn't use it, the Nintendo 64 doesn't use it, the retro consoles didn't even have analog sticks, you name it. So it won't make that much difference. Unless, of course, some port does, but we'll see later. Well, at the bottom of the device we have the FM button. This button now has a function. I'll tell you about it in a moment. This pseudo HDMI input from what I've researched on the forums the company's idea was to put an output for you to connect to the TV, but they gave up, or else the project didn't work. So this little input remained, but there's nothing here. It's just an ornament. There's a connection for you to charge the device, a micro SD card slot, and a headphone jack. On the top of the device we have a host, which is actually a USB Type-C for peripherals the power button for turning it on and off, plus and minus, which is the volume, and the L and R buttons. Remember that the trigger buttons here are not so malleable, they are almost fixed, but they are very pleasant when playing. We don't have anything about the back of the device, just some information here. I think the device itself is beautiful. I really think its design is very nice. The black color, in my opinion, is also the most beautiful, but of course that's a personal matter. There are other colors available, there's a white color that's also nice, and there's a Game Boy style color which is gray. Color has absolutely nothing to do with performance. What does interfere with performance is this new system called Crossmix. It's really optimized. It manages to extract the best from this device and turn it into probably the new darling of the crowd because it's good value for money and runs a lot of consoles very well even some PSP games man the heaviest ones they're playable here and could figures faster than most PS2's so let's see what this device will do for us now it even has some much older systems such as the Commodore 64 CPS from 1 to 3 Arcade, Nintendo DS, and so on. Also the games and ports. Sega Saturn only has one game, but you can add more, just take a micro SD card and put it in your computer to access the game folders. Then you can play the games there. And that's it. Problem solved. Well let's move on to the PlayStation 1, in this case Tekken 3, so you can see how it performs. Remember that the save state works normally here with 10 slots. And look guys, 
at the performance of God of War on the PSP. Here I can tell you that it runs at around 25 to 30 FPS. You may say that this is not ideal, that the ideal would be 60 FPS. I think 30 in this case is totally playable. You can even see it in the background gameplay. But of course it won't run extremely smoothly as if it were a PSP. And I say in some videos that this is an emulator and not the real console. So if you want to play the PSP like the original, it would be good to have a PSP. If you want the PSP as a kind of bonus, then you can find a cost effect device. If you want to run the PSP better than the PSP, then you need to buy another device that is much more powerful. But it's a lot more expensive too. So taking that into account, this device here is also excellent for the PSP. Check out the other games too. God of War is a little heavier, but the others run well. Another highlight is the Nintendo 64 emulation. Remember that emulating the 64 isn't very simple. It's a little complex. Let's just say that the emulator isn't as well optimized as other emulators out there. But even so, I found the emulation to be very good. Taking advantage of the King of Fighters 98 from the arcade to talk about the DPAD, which I found to be one of the console's highest points. It really is very good. It works perfectly. And look, I didn't need any time to adapt, which is what we usually need, but not in this case. Really, the D-pad is good. The Dreamcast, Mega Drive, and Master System will also do well here. In the case of the Dreamcast, the vast majority of games will run well. Another highlight is the Nintendo DS emulation, which is even better with this system. And I'd like to tell you that you can change the screens using the shoulder buttons. But when you're dealing with two complex DS sets at the same time, it's actually hard to do that with this system. Make one screen big, the other small. Change between big and small. You name it. You can, let's say, optimize your emulation the way you want. And of course, I don't need to tell you that the Game Boy Advance and Super Nintendo will do well here, as we can see. And now it's time for the section I really wanted to show you, which is the section on ported games, which are usually PC games or games from other platforms that, let's say the source code has leaked and they've managed to port them to the PC and, in addition to the PC, they've also ported them to these devices. And there are games here that are simply great. I'll show you some of them, but the Ninja Turtles game, for example, is running perfectly, man. No lag, no graphical bugs, nothing like that. If I told you that the Nintendo 64 emulation isn't very good, it's not that optimized, with these ports, it's just perfect. In fact, it's better than the Nintendo 64 itself. The game is running there at 60 FPS, without any graphic bugs, without any sound bugs, without anything like that. So if you like Super Mario 64, and are suddenly a bit frustrated with the emulation of the game, try this version here. It's just great. It's even better than the console. Anyone who plays on PC knows that you can increase the game's resolution right? So graphically, it looks better. Well, I think that's enough for today. I've shown you the main things about this device, as well as how it performed with this operating system. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing and see you in the next video.